with that, we will open up with the opening statement for Gary Joyner. All right, it is working. I was making sure. Those paddles, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on to see those paddles. You know, we're a little getting older. We have a hard time seeing. Okay, my name's Gary Joyner. I'm running for property appraiser. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Pasco. I've lived in Newport Ritchie my whole life. I uh, currently have 33 years in at the tax collector's office uh, where I've pretty much done everything there. I've started from the front line in uh, 1983 up until my current position of director of operations. Uh, I currently oversee our five offices. Uh, I have about, depending on what time, 160 to 170 employees I manage. Uh, I'm running for property appraiser because I want to make sure that, you know, we're doing a fair and honest job. And I'm not saying that it's not currently that way, but I want to keep it that way. You know, I was born and raised here. I have a valid interest in this county. My children are growing up here, which are out there. My daughter just bought a house. My son will be buying a house. So I want to keep it affordable for them and everyone else that lives here. Uh, it's a great county. You know, Pasco is exploding again if you look at Land Lakes and Wesley Chapel. Uh, I just want to be out front of that. Uh, keeping the assessments where they need to be and get them in as quick as we can so we can get the county their money as quick as we can. Uh, some of the things I want to improve on is technology. Uh, I believe that, you know, the property appraiser's office, though they do a great job, uh, I think we can improve technology in, in, in several ways. So that'll be one of my first things. And what I want to continue to do there is keep the uh, great customer service they have. That's number one. And uh, we just want to keep that going. I think with technology, uh, we can move forward. You know, I have I've, I've visited other counties. I've seen the technology that's out there, and we can move forward with that and keep things going in the right direction. I'm a very hands-on person. Uh, as I'm dedicated to my current job, I'll be the same way as a property appraiser. You know, I'm one of the first ones in and one of the last ones to leave at the end of the day. Um, so I will be a full-time hands-on type of person, and I'm, my door will always be open for anyone that has a question or a need or just wants to talk. That's what I'm about. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ted Schrader. First, let me just thank the West Pasco Chamber of Commerce for uh, hosting this event tonight. It is so critically important that uh, the public become informed and involved with our election process. And um, it's, it's, it's I'm just, just a pleasure and honor for me to be here with you this evening. Again, my name is Ted Schrader. I am also a lifelong resident of Pasco County. Uh, four generations, uh, my roots run extremely deep in Pasco County. Uh, I've had the privilege to represent you all on the Pasco County Commission for the past 16 years. Uh, as a member of the Pasco County Commission, I have uh, represented the, uh, the, the commission on the Pasco County Value Adjustment Board and have served as chairman for seven of those years. I've been a licensed realtor for 30 years. Uh, I know real estate uh, in Pasco County. Uh, I know what it takes to be able to uh, uh, do uh, evaluations and analysis of property all across uh, this county. I'm proud to have the endorsement of the outgoing property appraiser, Mike Wells, as well as his predecessor, Ted Williams, who served honorably in that capacity. But I too, like Gary, want to remain focused on providing uh, the, the, the best service possible to the residents and taxpayers of Pasco County. And anybody that visits the website uh, for the Pasco County Property Appraiser, we want to make sure that we remain on the cutting edge and the forefront uh, and, and utilize the most available and, and, and technology that's uh, available to us today. I'm a small business owner. Uh, I've had to meet payroll each and every week. Uh, I know what it's like to, uh, to, to, to have to pay those uh, uh, FICA taxes and, and, and again, to meet payroll. Uh, I've, had, I've signed the front side of the check, unlike my opponent who signed the back side of the check uh, all of his career. Uh, public service is certainly one that's to be admired, but I think uh, in this particular field, you need to make sure you have someone that uh, has private sector experience, one that has experience of running a business, uh, which I have done successfully my entire adult life. I'd be honored to be your next pa next property appraiser in Pasco County. Would uh, uh, ask for your support. Thank you all. Mr. Joining, first yes. question to you. Yes, sir. Uh, if a home south of County Line Road in Pasco develops a sinkhole, its property value drops 30 percent. If a home on the north side of County Line Road in Hernando develops a sinkhole, its property value drops 50%. Why is there such disparity? 
And if you're elected property appraiser, what can you do to ensure consistency in how these homes are valued? Well, that's one of the things I want to do is keep consistency and keep it fair. And in my opinion, it doesn't matter where you live in Pasco County. I think it ought to be fair across the board. It doesn't matter if you live in East Pasco, West Pasco, South, North. It all ought to be done fairly. And that's what I want to continue, that's what I want to, continue to do. Um, in my opinion, it shouldn't matter if it's a, a million dollar home or a, or a $50,000 home. You know, the assessment is going to be the assessment. I want to follow what the law says. And if the law gives me the 30% or the 50% or whatever it may be, that's what I'm going to follow. I don't think it's at my discretion over one or the other. I think the law dictates what we should do. And as property appraiser, I think we should follow that law. Commissioner. You know, we all just uh, experienced a, a real estate recession uh, seen by never seen by most any of us. I don't think any of you here, or, or you may have been some here, that remembers the Great Depression, but we saw a real estate recession that saw property values plummet all across Pasco County. And it was uh, very, very challenging to be able to come out of that. Uh, the sinkhole d dilemma is, 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 is one that uh, we have to remain diligent on and focused on, um, that, that, that we're fair and equitable to all of the taxpayers uh, in Pasco County. And as property appraiser, I would see to it, I have the experience to be able to acknowledge and recognize uh, those deficiencies. Well, I am a sinkhole person. Our home was uh, declared sinkhole several years ago, and we had to repair it. So I understand what it feels like to be a citizen and have to go through that. Uh, the work to restore it, the insurance work, all the different companies. So I do want to make sure we're fair in, in the assessments, because like I say, I have been one. Commissioner Schrader, another question about property values. Central and East Pasco's home values are higher than those in West Pasco. What can be done to bring up those values? As a sitting commissioner, I'm proud to say that we've uh, d decided to break up the county into geographic regions. And we have the West Market area and the Harbor Market area. We're also focused on trying to uh, uh, encourage cleaning up US Highway 19 to make it more presentable and attractive to those that come into this, this county. Um, when we, the West Market area will, will allow us to be able to focus primarily on um, what it's going to take to be able to revitalize that area. I'm also proud to say that I supported the Penny for Pasco, and with the recent passage of Penny for Pasco, we set aside uh, monies to incentivize businesses to relocate to Pasco County. So it's all about bringing jobs to Pasco County, jobs that are high-paying jobs, high-skilled jobs. And, and if they meet the criteria that the county has set aside, then we're going to attract those jobs uh, and, and to, to Pasco County and to be able to provide those opportunities for many to be able to put the investment into their homes uh, that they so, so desperately need. With living on the west side, I, I agree. I would love to see the west side get back to where it was when I was a child. We had a lot of prime and pristine neighborhoods, and I'd like to see us get back to those. And I think when we do that and clean some of those up, I also agree with the uh, revitalizing of businesses here. US 19 has a lot of vacant buildings. I'd like to see us fill up first before we expand anywhere else. Let's take care of what we already have. Uh, I agree. Uh, some of the neighborhoods we need to go through and see if we can't do it as a group, you know, and, and work to revitalize some of these neighborhoods, work with the commission and whoever else we need to, to get them back to where we, we would all love them to be. We just recently adopted and changed our uh, uh, transportation impact fee to a new fee methodology um, that uh, allows us to have zero impact fees to incentivize the businesses to come here. And it's not just the large businesses. We want to focus on small business as well because we recognize that small business is the backbone of our economy. So with the county commission, and I'm proud to be a part of that, is doing as much as we can to attract jobs to this area to be able to help our citizens. Thank you. Mr. Joyner, what would be your top three goals as an elected official in Pasco County? I'm sorry, I missed the first What would be your top three goals as an elected official in Pasco County? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to work with the other constitutionals. You know, over my career, I have seen, uh, not being a politician myself, but I've seen over my career where we just don't seem to work as a group. You know, it, it seems once we, we get to a certain point, we, uh, we're individualized. I want to see us work as a group. You know, at the end of the day, we all work for the same people, and that's the citizens of Pasco. And I think as a group, we need to come together. And I think if we did, 
uh, a lot more is accomplishable. You know, as property appraiser, one of the first things I want to do is, is get out in the community, uh, get together, you know, have, have, have meetings with the people that w we touch the same people, the real estate agents, the closing agents, the attorneys, the insurance companies. Let's get together and form a group and keep each other abreast of what's going on, you know, in our world and in their world, and, and see if we can't revitalize that. And last is technology. I think technology helps everyone across the board. We're all moving in that direction. And uh, I just want to be out front and do those things. You know, I've, I've had, like I said, I've had the privilege of representing Pasco County for 16 years, which means that I've had to work with the constitutional officers uh, in the budget process. And we have worked collectively and cohesively together to be able to provide a balanced budget, lowering the property tax rate as much as we possibly can, yet and yet still provide quality service. Uh, I want to be able to continue to provide great quality service to the citizens of Pasco County if I'm elected uh, uh, to the property appraiser. I also want to be sure that uh, those that recognize that Ted Schrader has been, uh, that I've had the integrity uh, as a county commission, I want to bring that same integrity to the property appraiser's office, but also, uh, as my opponent said, technology is something that we have to be sure that we're on the cutting edge of technology and bring whatever's available to make it readily accessible all across uh, uh, this area. I, I guess I have to a little disagree with, uh, with the getting along. You know, I've seen enough, been to enough commission meetings and been around enough, you know, we, we, don't, get, we don't work close enough together. As a group, I, honestly, we just don't. I just think that's got to be our number one focus. You know, as a property appraiser, we don't set rules and we don't set laws, but we also have to, to work with them. So I'd like to see us work harder together. Commissioner, you mentioned the mobility fees a few seconds ago. Um, your campaign literature tells your fiscal stewardship of the county, but you voted for that nickel per gallon gas tax increase in 2014, higher stormwater assessments, and higher property tax rates in 2015. So I guess, when did the public get to experience that fiscal stewardship, and has it been able to trickle down to Joe Q Public? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the last part of that question. Has, has that fiscal stewardship been able to trickle down to the public? The citizens' outcry for services was there. Uh, we had roads that were deteriorating and they needed to be addressed. Uh, raising the gas tax was the appropriate steps and the measures to be able to take uh, to, to, to address those needs. The only way to raise property values in neighborhoods was to improve the infrastructure around, so I was um, willing to support that. And at the same time, we, we needed to be able to provide uh, economic incentives, and in order to do that, uh, the mobility fee needed to be adjusted, and, and, and raising the gas tax facilitated and allowed us the ability to be able to do that. So the trickle down is starting to show uh, throughout the county, as, as my opponent correctly pointed out, that uh, the economy is turning around, things are improving, and um, it just takes time to be able to do that. I agree, the economy is, a, is improving, but not in all parts of the county. You know, this west side. Uh, could use some revitalizing, could use some help. And, and I agree, my opponent did vote for those, all those tax increases, you know, and talked about raising property taxes and, and raising the assessed value of certain subdivisions. Well, you know, I think we can do that if we come in and revitalize those subdivisions, and we can raise property values by those across the board for everyone, not just the select few. You know, the Save Our Homes provides um, some, some real safety nets to our residents throughout the county. It does exactly what it's intended to do, which, is, which protects you from those assessments going up. It can only go up 3% or the consumer price index, whichever is less. But there's a delta that has to be met. And in order to provide those services, Pasco County has to meet those needs. Mr. Joyner. Yes. Your campaign literature. Yes, sir. How some of you work in the tax collector's office that says it has saved the public money. Yes, sir. However, in the past few years, the tax collector's actual expenditures grew from 5.2 million, that's as of 2013, to 7.4 million in 2015. Now, by my math, that's a 42% increase. Your own salary has also grown by a third. The question then is, where did the public experience these cost savings, and did it trickle down to Joe Q. Public? Well, I can honestly tell you as far as the overall budget, I don't approve the overall budget. That's done by Mr. Fasano, and you'd have to ask him that question. As far as my salary, yes, sir, it has increased, and if you look at that, uh, it has went up over the, the last three years. Uh, I haven't always made that salary in my 33 years there. You know, I can control what's in my departments, and in my departments, we've done a few things. We have, uh, we went from a, an archaic computer system that we were on the county mainframe. We have 
uh, modernized our office. We had a vendor for that. We had a vendor for credit cards. We had a vendor for our tax system, for our cashiering system. And we've modernized it and went to one. Uh, we don't pay as maintenance fees. Uh, we have one vendor instead of three. You know, one of the other things I think is very highly is, you know, we were doing two mailings, too many mailings. And in those mailings, we had printing, we had envelopes, we had postage, which is expensive. You know, we have limited our postings to what's required by statute, and in doing so, we saved tens of thousands of dollars under my departments. One of the other things we've done is, I wanted to do, and Mr. Fasano let me do, is in-house printing. We're probably the only tax collector in the state of Florida that prints everything we have in-house. That's from your tax bills, your registration, letterheads, every form we use is printed in-house. We have more than paid for those printers over the time. So we have saved tens of thousands in printing costs. And I'll tell you on top of that, I think one of the other savings is your private information, your personal information, whether it be your driver's license number, social security name, address, it stays with us. We don't send it out to third party vendors. Your information is not hitting the highways. It's not out there for everyone to get. It stays in house and we protect that. Having served on the commission for 16 years, had the, um, the, 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 the task of, of preparing the budget each and every year, working with county staff to prepare the budget. The tax collector's office uh, provided uh, um, uh, um, excess funds to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, the previous uh, tax collector uh, historically provided uh, excess funds in the four to five million dollar range. Recently, those funds have dwindled down to around a million to maybe just a little over a million dollars. That has placed a, bu a burden on the, the Board of County Commissioners to be able, to, 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 be able to, to balance our budget effectively. First on that, I don't believe the tax collector's office should be funding the county. Uh, second of all, we've also added an office and, and a lot of personnel. And you know what those costs come, you know, personnel costs are, are, not, are not cheap at this time. But we've added an office in Wesley Chapel who currently sees, you know, almost 400 customers a month, or I'm sorry, 400 customers a day. So, and, and we have left that property on the tax roll. You know, we didn't go out and purchase a piece of land. We leased that land that left a nice big piece of commercial property on the tax roll to still be taxed. Commissioner Schrader, because the county seems much divided at times, how do we get the east and the west to work together? Build Ridge Road. <laughs> We, you know, there's always been this sense of a divide, but um, the, the county commission works extremely well together. We recognize that we represent all the citizens of Pasco County. Um, the county is a growing county. There's parts of the county that are growing more uh, than, than other parts of the county. But the board recognizes that um, the, the, the parts that, that have the challenges, as I said, we, we've divided them into market areas because they have their own unique um, uh, um, challenges that uh, we need to work through to be able to provide the assistance and the relief that they need. So I, I disagree with that statement. There's this divide uh, between Pasco County. The only thing that divides the two counties uh, would be the county line 41. But uh, other than that, I, I just strongly disagree. There's this sense of divide uh, between Pasco County. Ms. Shelton, I agree with your question. That's why I said a minute ago, we need to work closer together. I don't think we do. And I wanna be a part of turning that around and working together. I've knocked a lot of doors in this county, especially on this side. And I constantly hear, we never see anyone in my neighborhood. I've, I, I, the doors I've had, I've had people tell me they haven't seen a politician in 20 years. And I was the first one. Well, you know what? I wanna to continue to be that same person, going to their neighborhoods, knocking their doors. And I, we just don't get that now out of what we have. As I said before, the excess fees, the, the, the taxpayers own the, the facilities and the taxpayers are due the excess fees uh, that are generated from the tax collector's office. And I think those excess fees have been hugely deficient in the past few years. Thank you. Mr. Joyner, there has been criticism of the current property appraiser on Greenbelt exemptions. The Pasco tax collector was critical of a pine tree farm being given an ag exemption because he said it wasn't a legitimate farm. Likewise, some social media sites also criticize Greenbelt exemptions for property targeted for development. As property appraiser, what will you do to ensure property exemptions are awarded fairly and equitably? That's a great question. And again, yes, Mr. Fasano did criticize. I'm the one running for property appraiser. And I will tell you, 
the law is the law. The property appraiser doesn't set the law. The property appraiser doesn't make up the rules as they go along. The property appraiser has to follow what the statute says. The statute requires certain criteria. My job will be enforce that criteria. And I, and I have to expand on a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's Greenbelt or it doesn't matter if it's Homestead exemption. You're required to meet certain criteria. And if you don't meet the criteria as a property appraiser, it would be my job to take that exemption away. You know, just like a homestead exemption requires you to live in the home, I think the exemption for ag ought to require whatever you're getting the exemption for, whether it be a tree farm or a cow farm or whatever it may be. I think you need to uphold that your end of the, part, the, the law, do what's required, and, uh, you know, the exemption will be there. For 15 years, I've served on the Value Adjustment Board and had to review hundreds, if not thousands, of pages of appeals. That's the first line of appeal of the taxpayer to the property appraiser's office. And many of those appeals have been homestead exemption and agricultural exemption. I'm going to follow the state statute. The state statute is very clear when it comes to protecting the homestead exemption and also protecting the agricultural exemption. It has to be bona fide agricultural operation to be entitled to the, to the ag exemption. And, you know, Mr. Schrader has served on the VAB board. I've also, for 33 years, had customers that come in every tax season and have to make a decision whether they pay their taxes, buy their medicine, or put food on the table. And that's why I think we need to be fair. You know, we have to look at every type of exemption, whether it's a homestead, whether it's a green belt, and let's be fair across the county. Mr. Schrader, you let you talk to each other. What's the one question you would ask of your opponent and ask him to answer in this debate? Mr. Joyner, the Pasco County Supervisor of Elections Office shows that you have been a lifelong Democrat. We're in a Republican primary. Why is it the Republicans should vote for you because you've been a lifelong Democrat? Well, I have no problem with answering that. You're right, Mr. Schrader, I did switch from a Democrat to a Republican. But I will tell you this, I voted for a Republican president ever since probably Ronald Reagan, and I plan to do so again. But I will also notice yourself, sir, you, you know, you call me a Democrat, but I've also noticed you've raised impact fees, you've raised property taxes. Uh, all those things seem to be to lead to me that you're the more liberal Democrat than I am. I, I'm the most conservative commissioner on the county commission. The St. Peter's time has even alluded that, that Ted Schrader is the leader and the most conservative and the most fiscal responsible commissioner in the past 16 years in the Pasco County Commission. Mr. Joyner, same opportunity. What's the one question you'd ask of your opponent and ask him to answer in the debate? Well, I can tell you, I'm going to treat the property appraiser's office as a full-time job. I don't have any other business interests out there. My only function will be to the property appraiser. You know, you've stated you're a small business owner. Uh, how much time do you plan on dedication to being a property appraiser? 100%. Well, I guess I would feel sorry for your other businesses then. Well, I got one more. Uh, and this goes to, I think, Commissioner Schrader, I've lost track. <laughs> I, 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 think okay. I, think, I think it's my turn. So. Oh, okay, I, I beg your pardon. Well, okay, this follows up on something you just said. Uh, you're seeking the Republican Party nomination uh, to run against a Democrat in November. So the question is, do you support the Republican Party's presidential ticket, and do you plan to vote for Donald Trump for president in November? Yes, sir. Ever since I've been a registered voter, I have always voted for a Republican nominee, and I intend to cast my vote for the Republican nominee in 2016. Uh, I think we're going to move to closing statements. Again, I want to I want to tell you my 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 goal is to be the property appraiser. I want to keep this county fair. You know, like I say, I'm born and raised here. I have a valid interest. I plan on retiring from this county. I have children. I want to do the same thing from. I want to keep it affordable for them and everyone else that lives here. You know, be proud of where you're at. And I think if I can get in there, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be 110 percent for you. And trust me, I will be a full-time property appraiser. I don't have other business interests, you know. I'm just, I just don't. You know, I'm a very hands-on person. My staff would tell you, 
that uh, I'm going to know the job from the top to the bottom. You know, I heard a comment that it's not my job as property appraiser to know the job. That's what the staff's job's for. And I appreciate the staff there, and they do a great job. But I tell you, I don't think you're going to be an effective manager or an effective boss or a property appraiser if you don't know the job. So I can guarantee you I will know the job. I will always be there, and my door will always be open for everyone. You know, like my grandfather, like my grandfather before me who had the privilege of serving the citizens of Pasco County, I too have had that same honor and privilege, and it has certainly been a privilege. I'd like to continue that, um, that honor and privilege and, and serve the citizens of Pasco County, but just in a different capacity. I want to bring my business skills to the property appraiser's office. I spend an enormous amount of time as a county commission transitioning from the county commission to the property appraiser's office. I can certainly say that I'm going to dedicate 100% of my time to do that. I'm so proud to have the endorsements of Mike Wells, the outgoing property appraiser, Ted Williams, the property appraiser before him, the endorsement of Speaker Weatherford, the endorsement of Senator Simpson, the endorsement of so many other prominent officials across the state, and especially the voters of Pasco County that have voted me in to have this privilege to represent you um, during the, over the last 16 years. As a licensed realtor for 30 years, I have the experience, the knowledge, I will hit the ground running on day one. It would be an honor to have your vote on August the 30th, and today I'm seeking that post, post, and I would ask you very kindly for your vote on August 30th, and thank you all for attending tonight.